Hey guys, Ed Bud here. I'm going to talk about the Alphafly Next% Percent in today's vlog. So with Nike superbly trolling everybody riding on this kind of surfboard of incredible publicity, they have unveiled that in fact the Nike Alphafly Next% Percent is perfectly legal and it will be released at the end of February. I mean you can't buy that level of publicity can you? Everybody was talking about it from kind of part runners to you know elite athletes you know what's happening with this shoe well of course it was going to be released do you think they'd really spend that much cash developing something only to be told that no it can't be released it does feel a little bit like we've been kind of scammed by a sort of Derek Trotter only fools and horses style scheme it was always going to be released that aside I think the most intriguing thing about Nike's press statement from a couple of days ago is that they're being very sure to be inclusive in terms of the shoe. They're saying if you run a two hour or you're looking to run a three, four, five hour marathon, this shoe can help you. There certainly seems to be a continued movement away from that kind of elitist attitude, certainly towards the everyday runner. Obviously, that's to try and maximize the profits and the sales, but it's quite refreshing. The press release does, of course, mention fast times and elite athletes and all this kind of stuff, but it's nice to see a continued movement towards the standard people like you and I, those guys and girls doing their best out there, just getting out there. Onto the shoes themselves, we can now see really what this shoe's all about. So the big thing, aside from the foam, is obviously the introduction of those two Zoom Air pods or pucks. They're smack bang in the forefoot area, right kind of under where your the sort of the ball of your foot is, I guess. People do seem to be looking at those pods as springs, or at least some people do. I think if you've done any research on a spring, you'll find that energy needs to be placed into a spring, and that potential energy can be, of course, or at least some of it, can of course be delivered back. Springs kind of store and absorb energy. And people have kind of been saying that they give people an advantage because they're kind of giving them more energy. They've still got to put that energy in. Science tells us that you've got to put that energy into the spring for it to store it, and then that potential energy can be returned. So it doesn't make energy, it's not an engine. Too long, really, I've listened to people who've never even worn the shoes, or perhaps experienced them, seen them, whatever, who kind of deem them cheating. I just find it, quite frankly, I'd find it ridiculous. They're no more cheating than very rigid track spikes that we've had for many many years or highly aggressive outsoles on a trail shoe it's just material guys you've got to put energy in to get it back that's just the way it works something interesting for me will be if those who have stated that this shoe goes too far whether they will stand by those decisions and not wear these shoes time will tell so those pods in the forefoot act as compression springs they have to be first compressed and then reopen. Clearly there's some research here that Nike have been looking at that suggests that that ZoomX foam in the forefoot does start to bottom out at a certain point, regardless of how much they put there. So it'll be very interesting to see just how much of a difference that those Zoom AirPods actually make. So another very interesting piece of news from that statement uh, Nike released recently is that the plate across the midfoot, sort of embedded into the foam, will be of different thicknesses and rigidity dependent on the size of the shoe. I'm wondering whether this is in fact something that's been inherent within some of the other versions of the Vaporfly, because certainly people seem to experience different things um, and find kind of different properties from the shoe. Actually, the more and more I think about that, the more intrigued I am to know more. Obviously, if you've got a lot of foam in the midsole, you're gonna need perhaps a little more rigidity. The less foam, perhaps there's less requirement for rigidity. So I've always kind of thought that it's a bit of a misnomer about the plate, it being some sort of kind of the springing action to the plate, adding propulsion. I think it maybe does a little bit. I do remember reading a white paper on the whole thing a little while ago, probably about 18 months ago, that suggested that the plate actually doesn't really add that much and they think that it was the foam itself that was providing the additional advantages. I think certainly that plate's a little bit of a red herring. 
I think having experienced over hundreds of miles that Zoom X foam that the plate really is there to provide some rigidity in the midsole due to the Zoom X foam just being so kind of flexible, so squashy. It's just there to provide some structure to the midsole. I think that's where the true magic of the Vaporfly series lies is in that foam. No other manufacturers yet seem to have harnessed that kind of composition of that foam to achieve similar results. So more foam, addition of those AirPods in the forefoot and a much more aggressive kind of forefoot traction area. In addition to that, those scientists over in Oregon have produced an even lighter upper. I mean, when you're adding all that extra stuff in, the AirPods and the more foam, so on and so on, you're gonna need to make some sort of weight saving elsewhere. No one wants them to produce a heavier shoe. That, that wouldn't go down well. Can you see anybody being happy about that? What do you think, Beast? Yeah, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I bought you the kitten food, okay? I was under pressure, it's been a tough week. So to compensate for that extra weight, they've developed this atom knit material. Apparently they steam the material. <laughs> I love this. It sounds kind of like some English dessert, like a steamed pudding or something. They steam the material and then stretch it to over a specific kind of last or something. And then they have atom knit. It sounds really like something from a 50s B movie. Child of the atom knit. I like it. That's been one of my goals actually. Over the course of my life, I've done lots and lots of stuff I wanted to do. I was a DJ, went across Europe, played rock and roll music in a band, became a teacher. I always wanted to make a B-movie, kind of a bit like Plan 9 from Outer Space. So that Atom Knit stuff is supposed to be super light, super breathable, and it's not going to retain any of that moisture. That seems to be a big thing, and no one wants to retain moisture. We all want to be made of silica gel. No, they absorb absorbs moisture, doesn't it? So it turns out that those regulations that have recently been put in place apply to a specific shoe size. So if the shoe goes above that size, then obviously in terms of scale, it's still allowed. I think it has to be like a 40 mil or less at a size eight. I don't know if that's a size eight US. I should imagine it is. Which means that in good old Ed Bud sizes or Forest of Dean runner sizes or Tim Gross sizes, it means the stack height's gonna be really high. We're talking die hard Bruce Willis sort of skyscraper stuff. So Nike are getting this one out to Nike members, it says. Nike members, not to everybody, at the end of February. I believe it's the 29th of February. Is that so it's four months ahead of the Olympics? It seems to tie up very nicely. Nike have clearly sped up the operation with that new ruling in place to get this one out as soon as possible. As with that new balance, where is it? It's here. As with the new balance 1080 V10 that I tried and reviewed very recently, the foam on the outsole here isn't the real story. The actual stack height inside at the heel is quite a bit lower than it actually first appears. I mean, when you look at that, it looks like a huge stack, but it really isn't that high. It kind of cups around the heel a little bit. And it's been proven that the new Alpha Fly now is legal. Everyone's gonna be able to wear it. Whether it was a rumor placed out by Nike, who knows, but it's certainly superb advertising, incredible publicity. You don't need an ad campaign, do you, really? I think the colorway looks great in the black and the green. It kind of reminds me of After Eight Dinner Mints. I think people are gonna like that if they prefer a subtle shoe, but you know old Ed Bud doesn't really like the subtle shoes, I like the crazy ones. I have to be honest though, if I'm able to get it, the Olympic colorway of this shoe is gonna be the one that I want. I think that looks absolutely superb. The AirPods are different colors. I think they're kind of like a red and a blue, very similar to the Ekaden colorways, actually. That red swoosh, it looks fantastic. Let's hope that one sees a more wide release. I would love to get hold of that shoe. So it's just not all about the Alpha Fly. There are also some other shoes released within that series. There's a couple of track spikes, so I'm not gonna to go too much into those, but the lesser kind of shoe looks very interesting. It's called the Zoom Tempo Next Percent. And of course, it's got some similarities with the Alpha Fly. But to me, it looks a little bit more like that kind of high intensity training shoe that Nike put out recently. There's a visible kind of gap between the heel area of the midsole and the forefoot area. Apparently, this one's not going to be as stiff as the Alpha Fly. It's going to use a carbon infused nylon plate similar to that used in the Nike Zoom Fly series. I have to be honest, I really liked that shoe. I think that was probably my favorite of the Nike Zoom Fly series. That shoe's interesting because it's gonna have Zoom X in the forefoot area, but React in the heel. I hope that doesn't mean that it's too unbalanced. 
we know that React is a fair amount heavier than Zumax. Kev Burton will be very pleased to hear that it's a fly knit upper on that shoe, but there's going to be a band kind of around the kind of top of the midfoot to ensure a better lockdown. I often found myself having to pull the lacing quite tight on fly knit shoes to get them to fit. I uh, haven't really experienced that in the Infinity run, that one's fine. There's going to be more rubber in the forefoot area so it lasts the test of time on some more intense training. So you can use this more like a daily shoe if you wanted to. To me it kind of almost looks like they got the best of both worlds in terms of the Pegasus Turbo series and the Zoom Fly series and they've kind of mixed them together into a tasty broth. So we're going to be waving goodbye to the Pegasus Turbo series by the sounds of it. An interesting other thing is they're releasing a Fly Ease version of this shoe as well. I think that Swedish guru of design, Jakob Nielsen, would be particularly pleased at this inclusion. We love you, Jakob. So as we sadly wave goodbye to the Pegasus Turbo series, Nike will remove $200 from our wallets so that we can have the Zoom Tempo next percent. Who knows how much the Alpha Fly is going to be? We shall see. If I get the chance to get one, I think you know what will happen. So I think round about now, Nike have probably stopped laughing at us in terms of their ridiculous joke. It's time for me to head off into the sunset and prepare myself for a few more training sessions. Thanks for watching through to the end. Please make sure you subscribe down here in the bottom corner. Give the video a thumbs up like and please comment below as to what you think about the Alpha Fly series. It's going to be very interesting. Lots of new shoes to test out. 2020 is just, it's been crazy up to now. Make sure you share the video with your friends. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you. People have been complaining that we've not had Beast in the videos for a while so here she is. You're a beast.